Hey, ladies and gentlemen, what's going on? Welcome back to another video where we go over everything that is going on inside of the cryptocurrency space. I hope you guys are all having a great day. We have some good, good stuff to go over. We're going to go over a hedge fund that just invested in some Bitcoin. We're going to go over Bitfinex, which suspended withdrawals of XLM. But the main thing we want to cover here is Akon announces a second stellar based smart city. So if you don't know, Akon is creating these smart cities that will run on crypto currencies he's creating a second and it will run on stellar it is pretty insane we'll also have ethereum this is from skybridge capitals anthony saramucci who says ethereum could be a store of value and also gives his take on what bitcoin is doing right now we'll also go over the ceo of binance and how he has 100 percent of his net worth in crypto and we'll also be covering and starting off here with ripple versus the sec and what exactly went down at the hearing yesterday and how this is looking to be a pretty much a pretty big win for crypto so this is going to be a good one guys Aside from the news, I also have a special announcement at the end of this video, which I think you guys are going to love. It's been massively requested, uh, so I'm excited to bring this to you guys. And also keep in mind, if you guys could also do me a favor and go subscribe to my Crypto Clips channel. This channel is where I take the clips from our main videos here. I take the most important segments and I put them onto this channel. So if you like short and to the point crypto videos on specific crypto topics, Crypto Clips is going to be probably perfect for you. With that said guys tap the like for the youtube algorithm and let's go into it let's see what happened yesterday at this ripple versus the sec in the words of brad garlinghouse he says today was a good day for ripple a one and a half hour discovery hearing was held yesterday in the lawsuit with the sec to decide the motion on whether Ripple should be granted access to the SEC's internal and external documents on the classification of Bitcoin and Ethereum. We have the Ripple team who is coming out and saying, you know, how, how did Bitcoin and Ethereum be classified as non-securities? We want to see that information. And by the looks of this, they are going to be allowed to see that information. So Ripple celebrated a big win as the judge granted the motion. And the SEC is now forced to disclose documents about external communications and formal internal letters. Ripple's fair notice defense also played a central role during yesterday's hearing. The principle of fair notice states that authorities should give regulated parties fair warning of conduct that a regulation prohibits or requires something to be done. Ripple's defense centers on the SEC's failure to provide adequate notice that the sale of XRP was prohibited. This also goes over important signals in favor of Ripple. Judge Netburn turned to the SEC first during yesterday's hearing and asked five questions. And with the first question, Judge Netburn also gave the SEC the crucial, crucial question for the motion. As Hogan enlisted, however, the SEC blew it. Her very first question pointed out that I now think was a big mistake of the SEC, suing Brad Garlinghouse and Chris Larson personally. Her first question was, did any of the cases you cite were there any individual sued? And the SEC's response was an honest no. And here's the thing, the judge already knew that, and this was the SEC's opportunity to change her mind, but I think the SEC attorney kind of blew it. Yesterday's victory sends two important signals for Ripple. The first important aspect of Ripple's victory yesterday was that the SEC will have to create a so-called privilege log of documents. It's a summary of documents that the SEC has. Ripple can use this to find additional references and more more information. Hogan concluded about what it means for the litigation going forward and says, now if there is a smoking gun type of document out there, in the next 30 days is when the SEC will look to get out of this litigation. This also conforms with, with Gensler getting on board. So if that is going to happen, look for some time in mid-May. Second, Judge Netburn set a clear signal in favor of Ripple regarding the fair notice defense. According to Hogan, the court will not order the SEC to spend, quote, hundreds of hours going through tens of thousands of documents, relevant only to Ripple's fair notice defense when it knows the entire defense will be thrown out next month, Hogan said. He says, I would be shocked if the judge would order the production of all these documents if the court is going to rule in favor of the SEC next month on its motion to dismiss Ripple's fair notice defense. So overall, guys, 
this was definitely a win today, right? In the words of Brad Garlinghouse, uh, today was a good day, and it was a good day for Ripple yesterday. That was the hearing for April 6th, so really awesome stuff. Let me know what you guys think. Do you guys think we are close to wrapping up this entire lawsuit? Let me know your opinions in the comments below. Let's also check out Binance founder and CEO Cheng Peng Zhao is placing his bets on crypto. So CZ already has a pretty cool story of you know how he got the money to invest in crypto cryptocurrency right how he made his fortune and now he's saying he still has a hundred percent of his net worth in it which is i mean is it crazy not really but is it risky yeah definitely right it's not crazy in the sense that logically i i understand where he's coming from uh, but i think it is risky to have everything wrapped up in one single asset class so he says i'm one of those guys who value liquidity much more than owning something i actually prefer not to own anything he said in a bloomberg interview he noted that various cryptos like bitcoin now make up nearly a hundred percent of his entire net worth as he does not own any real estate or much fiat holdings when asked how much of his net worth is invested in crypto Zhao said, I would probably say close to 100%. I don't own any fiat. The physical stuff that I own is probably negligible in terms of my net worth. So this is a concept shift. I'm not using crypto to buy fiat. I'm not using crypto to buy houses. I just want to keep crypto and I don't plan to convert my crypto into cash in the future. So it sounds like CZ has some diamond hands, right? He said it took him a while to ramp up his crypto portfolio. After buying his first Bitcoin, the CEO was in a big hurry to sell his apartment that he bought back in 2006 in Shanghai. He says, I sold my apartment to buy Bitcoin and I also quit my job. He said, you can rent an apartment or stay in a hotel and that gives you much higher liquidity. The CEO has previously claimed that he does not hold any fiat currencies, claiming he owns zero fiat. He stated that he only converts crypto to fiat for payments that can only be made with traditional money. Zhao is now one of the world's richest men in crypto in the blockchain industry. He's ranked the third richest crypto billionaire with a total wealth estimated at $8 billion as of January of 2021. And man, if this guy has 100% of his net worth in crypto, I mean, we could be literally looking at the next trillionaire right here, right? The massive money shift, the massive wealth transfer that is coming into crypto. And you have someone like CZ worth $18 billion with all of that into crypto. I mean... I really think we are possibly looking at a future trillion here. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Let's also go over Ethereum possibly being a store of value, according to Anthony Saramucci. Sarah he says that an institutional investor, he's mainly focused on Bitcoin, but he also sees big things happening for Ethereum in the future. I think there's a very big market for Ethereum, and I predict that Ether has good fundamentals and will grow, but I'm in an institutionalist sort of business. I think like an institutionalist, and I've got to get my clients thinking about crypto and digital assets. So as a first step, I'm focused on Bitcoin, and we only have now a Bitcoin fund. Also, if you guys are enjoying the video, tap the like button. It helps a ton for the YouTube algorithm and to help me grow the channel. Your support is much appreciated. So. Going back, Sarah Mucci goes on to float the idea of having an Ethereum-focused fund and posits that the world's second largest crypto could end up developing into a store of value. This is his quote. He says, could we have an Ethereum fund in the future? Yes. We certainly could. Everything that you're saying is true with the NFTs and the technology around Ethereum is going to make it a sticky cryptocurrency and a store of value and something that people will transact with. As for Bitcoin, the billion dollar fund manager highlights that he's trying to get his clients ready for a generational shift in the world of finance, okay? He's getting his clients ready for a generational shift in finance. Think about that. For us, it's the apex predator of the space. And right now he's referencing Bitcoin. So Bitcoin being the apex predator, predator of the space in Saramucci's opinion. And he says, what I tell my clients is, whether you like it or not, the world is moving into digitization. If you think about gaming, 4K, 8K is coming. If you think about children, what they're going to be thinking about, they're very comfortable transacting in Ethereum or Bitcoin. And I've got to get my clients ready for that. So if they have a one, two or 3% position, I think they're going to look at us as fiduciaries and think that they were very well served by that so some really interesting stuff right we had them bullish on bitcoin now they're bullish on ethereum and even saying it as a store of value so as we know ethereum and bitcoin are completely different you know so for bitcoin to be a store of value and now if ethereum can also be a store of value how many other cryptocurrencies could also be a store of value right does this mean that cardano could also be a store of value 
Could XRP also be a store value, right? What actually would dictate how a cryptocurrency could be considered a store of value, right? These are some very interesting things that we are seeing and that we are going through. We also have Bitfinex who suspends, suspended the withdrawal of XLM as Akon announces a second stellar based smart city. Uh, so I want to mainly cover the Akon stuff. But for those of you who don't know, there was basically uh, an XLM problem yesterday, something about validators. So some of these XLM stellar validators went offline and uh, they basically they got it fixed. But in that time, Bitfinex suspended the trading, but they got it fixed and they made a report of, you know, kind of what went wrong and how it got fixed. And I'm pretty sure they've done that before. I, I've seen before. Before. maybe it was like a year ago i could be completely off but i'm pretty sure i have seen before that stellar xlm had some type of problem and you know they immediately fixed it and they did a report of how the problem came about and they and they followed up with how they're going to you know make sure the problem doesn't come back again which in my opinion is awesome the fact that they addressed hey yeah we have a problem and they addressed you know how it happened and then how they resolved it to me that just it builds transparency it builds trust so let's go on to the Stellar Drives Another Smart City by Akon in Africa. Hip hop singer Akon has launched a new construction project in Uganda. The Ugandan government has granted him 2.5 or one square, sorry, 2.5 square kilometers or one square mile to create a futuristic city called Akon City. It's Akon's second project in the region. After announcing the construction of a city in its home country of Senegal, both cities will use a cryptocurrency Acoin based on Stellar Lumens. The singer stated that the features of this blockchain are ideal for the use case cases of his a coin the cities will have hospitals schools police stations and other services the aim of both projects is to boost the development and inclusion of the unbanked in africa into the financial system in a press released and issued by the president's office it was stated that the president shared with the guests many areas of interest and the value of untapped natural resources for investment in the country the president told the investor that in order to implement the investment interest in a short period of time the government would locate land for him, preferably in the districts of the central region or in the islands of the Kalangala district. In the singer's words, when the cities are completed, they will make way for a, quote, real-life Wakanda, in reference to the popular movie Black Panther. And the projects are expected to be completed by 2036. So, you know, not something that's going to be done around the corner. But nonetheless, right, what did we just read? We read Saramucci trying to get his clients ready for a generational shift in the way that in the way that our financial world operates, right? And this, I mean, I would classify this as a generational shift, right? This is going to be a city that has never before been seen. And like Anthony Saramucci said, this digitization is coming whether we like it or not. Uh, so we can allocate some of our portfolios to it now. Uh, take advantage of it benefit from it or we can left be left behind and fail to adapt to what is obviously coming hedge fund giant invest in bitcoin trust jp morgan ceo on crypto regulation and more news this is pretty interesting we're just going to cover some jamie diamond stuff and this new hedge fund that invested in GBTC, which is the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust, gets you exposure to Bitcoin. So a $48 billion hedge fund, giant, Millennium Management. Okay, this is huge. $48 billion hedge fund, Millennium Management, invested in Grayscale's Bitcoin Trust. The street reported, citing two undisclosed sources familiar with the matter. They say while the price premium GBTC long traded at against Bitcoin collapsed recently, it's unclear if New York-based Millennium booked any losses on the crowded trade. The report added without providing any numbers about the investments. They're saying that basically around the time that this hedge fund invested, the Bitcoin price pulled back, but they don't know if they actually suffered a, lo a loss or anything because they don't know the actual buy-in numbers. But the way that everything's coming out, it looks like they could have possibly bought at a you know not the best time but these hedge funds right they're not day trading they're not coming in and looking to immediately start going up and percent the second they buy right they're they're holding this for the long term at least you know long term probably at least six months to a year right i know that's not traditionally considered long term uh but just because of the nature of cryptocurrencies i'm sure they're probably in it for at least six months so if it goes down immediately after buying they're probably not panicking if anything they're probably just buying more 
We also have some Jamie Dimon news, the CEO of JP Morgan. He placed the legal and regulatory status of cryptocurrencies on a list of serious emerging issues that need to be dealt with and rather quickly. Per a letter to shareholders, other such issues include the growth of shadow banking, the proper and improper use of financial data, the risk that cybersecurity poses to the system, the proper and ethical use of AI, that was interesting. That sounds a lot like AGI, right? Creating and promoting benevolent AI for humanity. So I thought this was very, very interesting. The effective regulation of payment systems, disclosures in private markets, and effective regulations around market structure and transparency. Interesting stuff, guys. We have more hedge funds buying Bitcoin. And that was some interesting words from Jamie Dimon. My main question for you guys today, and what I'm going to scan the comments for, because I love reading what you guys put out, is kind of coming back over here to this article with Sarah Mucci saying that Ethereum is a store of value. I want to know if you guys think that Ethereum is a store of value. And if you do, what other cryptocurrencies you think are a store of value and why, right? Like how do they become these stores of value? Let me know all of your opinion in the comments below. I'm going to be scanning through and reading them. And also with that said, guys, that is the video. So if you only wanted to watch the news and that's it, then that is the news for you. Now I'm going to move into my announcement that I told you guys in the beginning of this video. I have a lot of you guys who will leave comments or DM me on Twitter and ask me what are some new hot projects coming up, right? what are some good altcoins to hold, what's in my portfolio, do you have any access to deep dives or your research or anything like that. And previously I didn't, as you guys know, my YouTube channel is mainly just going over the news and I'm trying to document the news and document the bull run. But as these requests kept coming in, a lot of you guys recommended me to just start a Patreon. I'd never had a Patreon before, so I looked into it and it, it looked pretty good, right? It's, it's kind of like an exclusive place to make content for private community. So I decided to start one up. I just launched it. There is absolutely no content in this, right? I have the page set up and, and that is it. So if you join, there's absolutely no content in it. But I just wanted to go over what, what you can expect is in it and what I'm going to be bringing to it. I will probably start uploading videos into it within the next two to three days. Um, I'm putting it out now while there's no content because ideally I would like to have between five, maybe 10 members in here. So at least as the content comes up, there is a group ready to watch it. So I'm actually presenting to people. Uh, but anyways, I also, I try to price it at a price that anybody could get in. So $15 per month, um, you know, it's less than a coffee per day. I've seen other people charging much more. Uh, so in my opinion, I, th I think $15, something anybody could afford. And it kind of, it, it prices it just high enough where you're paying for it. So you value it. It also incentivizes me to actually put out all this extra content and all this extra deep dive research. And at the same time, almost anybody could get in because of the low price point. So this is the only tier that I have. I might create more, but as of right now, this is it. And so this is what will be in it. This tier is for you if you need to get access to my top crypto picks and all of my altcoin gem research as I deep dive hot projects in real time with updates every week. I will show you every digital asset I hold in my personal crypto portfolio, along with updates Updates on what I'm looking to accumulate into or sell out of and you will also be added to our private community strategize and connect with real people on a similar mission so that is what you'll get access to and what I'm thinking is the first video that I put in right hopefully we'll have like five to ten patrons and in two to three days the first video that I'm putting in is going to be my crypto portfolio so that way Everybody can see what my crypto portfolio is. You can see all the assets that I hold. And then you could, if you see one you like, or you want to do research on one, you can go ahead and start doing research. And then from there, I, I, I know I can commit to one video per week for sure. So one video per week, deep diving each coin inside of my crypto portfolio until we have deep dived them all. I might do some type of voting so you guys can vote on which cryptocurrency I hold. You want me to deep dive first and basically be deep diving the entire project, uh, why I hold it how long I'm going to hold it for, when I'm looking to possibly sell it, everything like that. And then from there, right? So you'd have the cryptocurrency portfolio video, then you'd have the deep dives for every single one of the cryptocurrencies. And then other, any type of new altcoin project that I find that looks undervalued or looks a gem, any altcoin that I add to my portfolio, that would be put out every single week 
on the weekly update i will also post any crucial or breaking news so as you guys know uh one coin that i've talked about a lot here is agi i'm still very bullish on agi uh so any type of agi things that don't really fit into my normal style of video but it's a very important update that you need to be aware of like all that type of stuff all those types of updates will be all updated inside of the patreon so on agi and other projects as well and again just keep in mind if you decide to join now there's no content in it as of now it's going to be blank uh so you're kind of you're getting it on the ground floor so i'm hoping we can get a group of about 10 solid patrons in here so then by the time in two to three days when that first video goes up there's some patrons in there to actually view it and of course for any of you guys that do join i really appreciate the support especially the financial support to help me continue doing what I do, help me continue documenting news. And I hope the exclusive content, right? This member only content along with the private community really helps you guys. Uh, and I, I know I didn't, I didn't touch too much on the private community. I'll probably be starting either a telegram or a discord for us so we can all chat in there. And I think that's probably one of the most valuable things is getting around a community of smart people who are on a similar mission. Every time I surround myself with smart people who are trying to do the same things I do, I just have these breakthroughs. So overall, I, I hope that this $15 per month, it feels like you guys are robbing me. <laughs> that is my ultimate goal. I hope you feel as though you are paying too little by the time this thing really starts cranking. And for those of you guys who are getting in before there's any content and truly believe in what I am doing, uh, again, I, I thank you so much and your support is very, very much appreciated. With that said, our prices for today, we have Bitcoin at 56,000 and we'll give this a quick refresh. We'll go through the top 10. Yep, Bitcoin's still holding at that 56K. Ethereum at 1,900. BNB at 372. XRP at 92 cents. Polkadot at $38. Cardano at $1.18. Uniswap at $28. Litecoin at $217. And Chainlink at $30. That's our prices for today. Our Fear and Greed Index is in greed at 72. And with that said, guys, that is today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you subscribe where you get daily videos going over Bitcoin, altcoins, and everything going inside of the crypto markets. Also, make sure you tap the like button. It helps a ton for the YouTube algorithm and to help me grow this channel. We hit 18,000 subs a few days ago, and we are getting extremely close to 20,000. So thank you guys for all the support on the YouTube channel and everything like that. Keep in mind, I'm not a financial advisor. This isn't financial advice. I am just here to document the daily crypto news and this crypto bull run. And with that said, I will see you all on the next video. Have a great day, everybody.